Hi there, welcome to the TV Black Box one-on-one podcast. I'm Nicole Gunn and joining us today are director Dylan River and producer Greer Simpkin as we talk Mystery Road Origin, which is this Sunday at 8.30pm on ABC and ABC iView. Thanks for taking some time to have a chat to us um, about uh, Mystery Road Origin. Without giving too much away, either yourself, um, Dylan or Greer, what is this all about? What what are we what are we expecting, and where does Mystery Road Origin take us? Uh, Mystery yeah. Road Origin um, is, as the title says, the the origins of of Mystery Road, but especially Jay Swan. Uh, this season we set it in 1999, and um, each each film and, and series takes Jay to a new town. But this this time we're going to a town that's very familiar to him. It's his hometown. Um, and we very much explore the mystery of Jay, of his upbringing, of his family, um, skeletons in the closet, and really a much more deep and personal look um, at his life. Yeah, I found, I found it really interesting that we've gone back to 1999. I mean, obviously there's going to be a lot of um, time lag, if you like, that we can fill in. Will we get more of those sort of origin stories, do you think, or is this just a, a one-off? Uh-huh. Maybe I should. We, we'd love we'd love to do it again, actually, um, and keep going with the story. Um, it's really compelling, and um, uh, we can see where we could go with the story into another series. There's definitely more more to tell between between this season and um, the films and and the the, the two series previous. Um, you know, we've, we've we've still got quite a large time gap, but we've also you know, this, this is set prior to the first film, Mystery Road, um, and the story that unfolds in that. Um, and there, there's still quite a journey for Jay Swan to, to go on. I suppose people will be asking, do I need to be familiar with the, the previous two series and the movies? Do I Can I jump feet first into this one? Is there enough explanation there that I can engage with the characters and the story? I think absolutely. You don't need to have seen everything else. Um, it's a, it's a great story and it's and it's very clear from the beginning you know you can just you can watch it without having watched everything else having said that the first two series are on I, abc iview at the moment so um there is the opportunity to watch them but um i think the the writers and dylan have created a great story in in and of itself are people who have watched it you know, we'll get a certain nostalgia out of watching it. There's certain scenes which, you know, for example, the kind of the, the journey of Jay becoming, you know, a detective and, and getting that, that white hat, hat that is very well known for. You know, things like that. I think um, people will get that feeling of nostalgia, that sort of tingle that you get when you watch Star Wars and the lightsaber turns on type of thing. Um, but, yeah, you don't have to have watched it. The cast that you've put together for for the show for this series are amazing, and I suppose you've got a lot more leeway going back to 1999 and and finding those characters and finding those people. And Mark um, Cole Smith, who stepped into the role of um, Aaron Pedersen, played. He is amazing, I, and I'm, I'm not sure 100 percent of his um, his resume, but he nails it on so many levels. Yeah, he he really. I feel like he did his homework. I mean, I'd I'd like to take credit for. Yeah, him being, you know, such a um, great representation of Jay Swan, but um, you know, really, our conversations were fairly min- minimal. You know, it was basically for me and him, it was about creating trust between each other more than anything. You know, to let him do his thing, and um, you know, I'd, I'd steer him in certain directions physically when I when I knew what a singing could be, um, but a lot, you know, m- most of it's him. He he really did his research. Um, watching what Aaron's done for Jay and um and then also I think he really he really wanted to have the freedom and that's what not being in 1999 gave him is is to bring a Jay Swan that people haven't seen before a more positive Jay Swan a, a Jay Swan that smiles um you know a Jay that's still more optimistic in the world you know and we are moving towards that character that that um, Aaron played, you know, the Jay that people know. The, you know, the, the idea behind this origin story is to to see the the series of events that brought him to be like that. And I suppose the other one there is Steve Bisley. He was um, whenever he was on screen, I just I just was wondering where he was going to go with it. And in just 
lived it and breathed it. And but there was a sense of humour there as well. Yeah, I mean, Steve, you know, as soon as he read the script, he he tells me this is a dark comedy. I'm like, is it? <laughs> and he's like, yep, it's a comedy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so you know, that's the way he played it, and that's the way we went with it. You know, and um, giving him that freedom to explore. You know, there, a lot of his stuff is just ad lib. You know, he just tried different versions on the ends of scenes and, you know, <laughs> just go off on a big spiel. And it was really fun, you know, to be in the police station with him and, and just give him that freedom to just go for it. Yeah, what I really loved, um, having binged the two back to back and and wanting to know and wanting more, was that dynamic between um, Jay and Jack, the, that father-son dynamic was... Not engaging is not quite the word I'm looking for. It was compelling, I suppose. It left you wanting more, and that um, that story itself is is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, no, thank you. I think um, you know there, there, there's a lot of personal connections in there. I've definitely um, written written parts of Jay Swan as myself. Um, you know, not necessarily the relationship with my father's the relationship he has with his father, but there's little inklings of stuff in there. And, um, yeah, you know, that, that's how I like to approach storytelling of both filmmaking is, um, trying to make a, a personal connection for me. And it's how I care about what I'm creating and, and how I, I guess I make it hopefully relate to other people who have been through similar experiences. Yeah, and, and none of the characters, I and mean, we didn't have to get the entire backstory for the whole cast, but there it didn't come across as two-dimensional, like here's your stereotype, here's the stereotypical town in the outback. Um, they felt incredibly real, and it did show warts and all as well. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, it got a lot to do with where we, where we filmed as well. We had, you know, with a TV show, especially period, you know, you can be quite restricted with what you can film, where you can film. Um, to make it look accurate to that period. But we, we filmed in, in mostly in Coolgardie in a town just outside Kalgoorlie in WA. And, you know, we could essentially own the whole town, the main street. You know, we could just close down the whole thing. And, and it, having that freedom to be able to point the camera anywhere, I think, is what creates that realness for us. I was just going to jump in here and say that I, um, I want to uh, credit Dylan as the director for really... Um, uh, working so well with the actors to create that authenticity both in character but also uh, in place and, and also um, acknowledge Tyson Perkins, the, uh, cinematog- the director of photography. I think together they've really created something special and it's very cinematic but also very real. Yeah, I was going to ask, there's obviously that family connection and you sort of alluded to... Um your relationship with father, etc., cetera, um, Dylan, but there is a deeper connection here across the board with um, the original movies and the series. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I feel... Um, oh, I'm a big fan of the movies and what Ivan did, and I was very excited when Greer and Rachel were first making the, uh, the first season, you know, bringing it to TV, um, and really loved what they did with it. And I think, you know, as, as a fan, I've just sort of tried to emulate a bit of what Ivan did and a bit of what Rachel did and, and also look at what Ivan's references would have been, you know, it was, it was a few years before Mystery Road that No Country for Old Men came out by the Coen brothers and, you know, I can see that um, whether it was or wasn't as, as a big influence um, to what he did so I really looked back to that film which I love and, and used that as a reference to this and what we did Trying to work out what it was about, um, whether it was the, the the cinematography or the landscaping, um, where that sort of connected and that sparseness that it that it has has that sort of and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but there is a sense of foreboding that something is about to happen. And is it the landscape or is it the direction from you or is it the storyline itself? I think it's just everything, really. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't. Even it's very subconscious when I'm directing and I'm creating a foreboding feeling, you know, I think um, I'm, I'm more leaning towards comedy when I do things. I make, I make stuff that's meant to be serious, a bit funnier, a bit lighter, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you put your finger on, on one certain thing. Um, But, you know, we, we, we really tried to design this series, like me and Tyson shooting it. 
you know, a lot of it wasn't to do with where we point the camera on the day. It's a lot of it's a lot of prep to find those locations. You know, they do ninety nine percent of the work and and really plan it as best we could because TV is so fast and furious that you don't really get much time to explore on the day. So we found that you know it's all in prep work. It was you know a few months of of shot listing the whole series you know the whole six hours and and knowing where we're going so when we're filming it all out of order we could just jump into what we know and what the plan is well Gree, i was going to ask was this filmed during the pandemic or prior to it and if it was during the pandemic did that present its own challenges as and as producing this show yes we did film we filmed we actually um shot from october to december last year in wa and at that time, the WA border was closed to the rest of Australia. So um, we we had to, you know, think quite laterally. And I think some really wonderful things have come out of that. For instance, usually in previous series, we've cast far and wide across Australia and cast have flown in and out. And this time, we, we, we had very limited opportunities. We did do that um, with some of the terrific casts that are in it um, that, that came in, like Toby Leonard Moore and... Um, Salme Garansar and um, Dan Henschel but um, out of the 80 speaking roles we actually got 72 from WA and um, Dylan and I and the casting director Nusha Zarkesh really we auditioned and looked at a lot of people in WA and some of the some of the um, cast that are in the series it's their first um, on screen role which I think is really terrific and I think all the performances are amazing and that's credit to what Dylan's done but you know sometimes when you have a lot of constraints some really uh, amazing things can come out of it so um, that was one of them really that, that you know was very positive we also um, worked with um, a lot of locals in Kalgoorlie and Kulgadi um, some of them with speaking roles like the um, character of country and so that that's also wonderful that there were a lot of local first nations roles um that we were able to cast were there any other challenges that you had to um deal with or was it fairly um smooth sailing uh look um both previous series were shot um uh in you know up in the top end as it were so in, in july where it's blue skies every day Kalgoorlie is much further south and so we did face a lot of weather there was a lot of wind um, uh, there was um, you know a very unpredictable so that that was quite tough for the shoot um, I think uh, every producer will say that it's tough um, working during the you know the pandemic um, you know it does it does add a lot a lot of added pressure but um, we were pretty lucky because COVID didn't actually come into WA while we were shooting so we were we were fairly lucky. What would you say, Dylan, of your experience of shooting? Yeah, COVID was a big one. I remember, you know, your your level of, of stress was definitely heightened by that. You know, I think, um, you know, well, it was, it was, I was very aware of, you know, if a case did come into WA, into that town, especially as part of our crew, you know, we just instantly would have to shut down for a while and we couldn't afford to do that. Our shoot was backing right up till Christmas, like literally we we were packing up to get people to their Christmas lunches with their family. Um, so we really couldn't go over, over schedule. Um, so that, you know, that, that added pressure, but I think, you know, there's, there's things that we can now laugh about. Like the flies were just, you know, pretty intense at that time of year. And, um, especially in that part of the country. And, um, we had to embrace the flies. There's a lot of flies in this series and, um, we put a lot of sound effects, added sound effects of flies to add to it. But, you know, um, We've got some great behind-the-scenes bloopers of Mark Coltsmith swatting flies constantly, and there's a lot of hair uh, fly spray in people's hair um, to keep them away from their face. But he's sort of just told the actors, you know, if, if a fly does land on you, just make sure you shield it away because it looks, you know, horrible when it's crawling into your eye and you're pretending it's not there and you just keep talking. So, um, yeah, flies were a challenge. Greer, before I, I let you both go, the, the townships that you filmed in, have they been able to see this? And if they have, what was their general reaction to seeing their home uh, on the screen? Well, I was just going to add that when we were talking about Steve Bisley's character, that last week we had a screening back in Kalgoorlie at um, an art centre where there were about five or 600 people um, that, that turned up. And and it was wonderful because, um, you know, when you make TV, you don't often see it with an audience. And it was a big audience. And um, they did um, 
they were right in it, but they also did laugh, and that was wonderful. You know, particularly at um, uh, uh, Steve Bisley's character, Kelton Pell, and um, and I think that that's um, what's really special about the series, in a way, is as it is a dark comedy. I think Dylan naturally um, has an ability to to find lightness in darkness as well, and I think it was it was just a really great screening. We showed the first two episodes, and they absolutely loved it. They loved seeing their town, you know. Um, and a lot of the people that were extras in it came along as well, and that and that was terrific. Well, the first episode airs this Sunday night, and can we binge watch it as well? I mean, there will be people who want to know now how it ends and, and how it develops. Can we binge watch or is it going to be teased out? No, it's uh first episode goes out Sunday night at 8.30 and then all the episodes are up on iView. So you can literally stay up all night and watch it if you want. So yeah, that's really great. I think Dylan and I are pretty happy about that. So it means that people can just um, watch it all if they want to. Absolutely, yeah, but very happy about about that being available in that way. You know, I keep calling this a film and I try to treat it like a film. It just happens to be six hours long. So, you know, people can watch it in a couple of hits. Um, I think they'll get more out of it. I really appreciate you giving us some time today just to talk about the, the show. And it's it's brilliant. I really enjoyed it. I probably enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I was thinking, oh, going back in time, how's this going to work? But it dovetails beautifully into the whole narrative. So... Uh, I just want to say thank you for that and thanks for thanks for joining us today too. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having us.